All right, welcome everyone to the uh, Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, um, April 19th, 2023. We have multiple folks from the public here. Jay Gerard, Deirdre's here, and Kent. Does anyone have any public comment at this time? So this would be an opportunity for Jay to speak if he wanted, would it not? Um, sure, it, it, it would, but I would also yield um, some of my time under the chair report a lot so we can have a two-way conversation with them. Great. So, Thank you. Jay, just give us um, a couple of minutes if you can. Sure. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, no, no. Hello, Kent. Thank you for coming. Hello, Deirdre. Thank you for being here. Um, I did send out the minutes uh, of the previous meeting. I don't know if you all had a chance to look at them. Okay, if you could check them out and then we can, somebody can entertain a motion to accept them as presented or if we need to make an amendment to them or something, that would be fine as well. I, I just have a quick comment. We're missing our newest member. Is that because he doesn't know or know how to join us? Um, he is in our, he did get an agenda and he did get an invite. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll text him. Okay. Thanks, right. Rob. Thank you. Uh, we lost you. I'm not hearing anything for the last minute or so. We're reading. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're quiet. We're quiet. Uh, yeah, I, you remember I'm blind. I, I can't see your faces. <laughs> They're showing on camera. Sorry. All right, I'm going to mute again. Okay, I have read them. I move that we accept the minutes as written. I'll second that. All right, thank you, Molly and Sue. There's a motion to accept the minutes as read or as presented with a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing no discussion. Uh, Bonnie, could we get a roll call, please? Absolutely, Rich. Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Rob? Yes. And David? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, all right. Uh, tree, let's see. Chair report, tree warden report. So I have a couple of things. Um, I, we, we talked at our last meeting about the public shade tree hearing on River Road. Um, that has not been scheduled yet. Uh, the, I think what's going to happen is that that will happen after I return from my uh, vacation to uh, Tennessee, which will probably be like the third week of May. So I'm going to try to get that scheduled because I don't think I have enough time to advertise it and actually be able to, uh, to actually have the hearing within a week's time because I'm leaving a week from this Saturday. So I will keep you posted. Um, I met today, so there, so I sent, Jen was kind enough to uh, send us all an email regarding the uh, public hearing for the 25% design review for Main Street, which is going to happen next Wednesday, mm -hmm. I think it's six to nine. Oh. Um, and I actually uh, got a, I, there's the 25% design plans are available on the uh, planning sustainability's website. So I'm going to forward you all a link. So you can just kind of review them. 
we I did have a um, I was involved in a Zoom conversation, a Zoom call today with uh, tool design and um, some uh, city stakeholders regarding um, different regarding the hearing that's going to happen next week. And one of the com one of the conversations we had was about the public shade trees that uh, the proposed public shade trees and the uh, public shade trees are going to be removed. So there is a preliminary list on that 25% design. Again, it's preliminary. It's not final. I have um, I have a bunch of questions um, for tool design regarding some of the species selection. Uh, so I will. I've reached out to Stephanie Weir. She's the uh, uh, the the, uh, she, um, the person in charge of the project uh, with us for tools. So, and then I will attend the public uh, the public hearing because I'd like to hear what folks have to say um about the design I, I can't recall how these things are handled but i think it's more of a sort of a slideshow that uh, mass dot puts together and then um there was obviously time for public comment and public input so we'll see we'll see how that goes but the i will just comment the design does show that there are um very few uh, of the existing trees that we have remaining on Main Street. Matter of fact, I could only find one. The rest of the trees on Main Street looks like they'll be removed mm -hmm. uh, to make way either for the uh, the extended sidewalk um, or the uh, um, the uh, dedicated bike lane that's there. There are a few. There are trees in front of uh, the old NIS Bank Building, which I think is Urban Outfitters and also First Churches that are going to remain. Those are city trees. And there are trees associated with like Pulaski Park in the front that'll remain Memorial Hall and also the ones that are that we just recently planted, like the Academy and the ones in front of the old school commons. So what about the courthouse? Those big those that those are all staying as far as I can tell. Those are private. Those are not the oh. design, design doesn't. Yeah, that belongs to the um, Hampshire Council of Government. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they actually have added, they've added a few trees. If you look on King Street, when you're coming up King Street and you come to the Main Street intersection, that intersection has shrunk on the right-hand side where we normally can take a right-hand turn. That has shrunk and they've actually have two trees proposed planting right there on the right-hand side. So there's there's quite a few, uh, quite a few trees. It's, I don't know how they're going to fit it all in, but I guess it's like magic. It just happens. So um, we did we did also talk about the tree stock and securing tree stock and um, how we're going to potentially we have some questions to ask mass dot if it's possible after the con the contract is awarded to um, a, a vendor if we had the ability to work with that vendor to mm -hmm. actually reserve the trees um, at the beginning of the project somewhere in some nursery so we're assured that we get the tree species that we would like because given the um given the demand given the amount of infrastructure projects that are going on throughout Massachusetts and also the country and the release of another billion dollars by the Biden administration um to uh promote and preserve urban canopy i think there's going to be a huge amount of pressure on nurseries um throughout the country to provide adequate tree stock so this project is most likely probably going to start in 2025 and extend to 2027. So that is a rough time frame. So we would have to be on the forefront of that to get the tree stock ahead of time. So we're trying to be creative. So we actually get the tree stock and it's viable. And uh, we're not actually in a position where the contractor usually gets the stock at the end of the project. And then they end up taking... Um, they have to do a lot of substitution sometimes because nursery stock's not available, et cetera. So, so I'll I'll have more to follow on that because I'm gonna I reached out to Stephanie Weir uh, to have a phone conversation with her about some of the some of those things that I noticed on the 25% design. So and are they probably gonna be ball and burlaps? My guess is probably they will be, given I think that from what I understand, Mass DOT was um wanted larger trees uh, they wanted taller trees because they wanted to have the ability to provide the appropriate clearance clearances i should say especially on the dedicated bike lane where you should have at least eight feet 
Um, but I think Tool basically sort of talked them off that uh, Tool had a conversation with them and discussed the fact that, you know, the um, the ability for a tree that size to actually adapt to its new environment would really be a stretch um, and you'd possibly be prone to more tree uh, failure or tree mortality. So, so yeah, we're, it's, so it should be an interesting, I hope, I hope some of you can actually attend. I think it would be really interesting um, just to hear from uh, other folks' point of views. Yes. So is there an indication yet at this stage, the 25% stage of uh, structural soil no. provided for in the, in the planning? No, no, that is a detail that will not come out probably until the 75% design, but the detail is there. So it is there. Um, it's a combination, I believe, of CU soil and um, sil using uh, uh, silva cells or cells similar to that. Oh, uh, interesting. Upon, yeah, I think it depends upon uh, utility locations and the potential for um, infrastructure issues with those utilities in regards to the silva cell or CU soil. So, but this is there really, a bud budget aspect where something like that could get chopped? Um, at this moment, I would say probably not, Good. you know, I, I don't, I, I, you know, again, I think there's probably going to be money available for a lot of different urban greening projects, whether this one would qualify for some type, you know, under that $1 billion that's made available. I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but it is possible. So, um, all right. I don't, oh, one other thing before I let Jay, before uh, we hear from Jay. Um, so the first Monday of May, I am not, I'm going to be down south. I'm not going to be here. So I will send you all an email regarding that, but I wasn't sure if you just were okay with canceling our first meeting of May. You mean the, first, the first Wednesday in May. Yeah, the first Wednesday in May, I'm going to be in Nashville, yeah. So um, that's our tradition. We usually cancel the meeting after. Uh, I know, but every once in a while, it's good to break the tradition, right? <laughs> so, so if you're if you're all okay with it, we will skip that meeting and we will just have one, our second meeting, which is on the uh, third uh, Wednesday of the month. That's okay with me. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, all right, I will yield the rest of my time, even though I think I'm over time or close to it, to Jay Gerard. Welcome, Jay. Hello. I don't have much to say. I'm just kind of here observing the meeting, and uh, Molly asked me if I'd be interested in uh, rejoining the committee, and so I thought this would be a good way to kind of see how things were going and uh, help make that decision. So that's it. Anybody? For those of you who don't know, Jay was on the commission several years ago. Thank yeah. you for considering, Jay. Oh, and it, if I could just say, it'd be so nice to think that as I leave, everything is in good hands. So, well, we had two vacancies just six weeks ago, I think, or two months ago, my potential vacancy and an actual vacancy. Plus, we had a vacancy that um, David Lucas filled. So it was, it's just nice the way the community has come together to fill, potentially come together to fill all the gaps that have been created. Nice. I'd like to um, say hi to Rich Parrish. I don't know you. And I'd love to hear a little bit about you. And um, just, can you just introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, uh... I'm an eight-year resident of Northampton, and for most of those eight years, I've been volunteering with Tree Northampton uh, under the uh, wise guidance of Rob uh, in planting and also in pruning the young trees. So I'd, I'd say I've, I've had my hand on many of the, the new trees that the city has, um, and it would, it's extremely rewarding to me, uh, this kind of work. And so I really uh, see the value of, of the commission and the work that you're doing. So I was happy to, to join. Uh, my, just 
my background was as, as a geologist in my working life. I'm retired now. So, um, so just anything outdoors is satisfying and, and trees are the best. So, so. All right, I'll, I'll add that Rich to put in a lot of time with working with me and is the most likely person to not back down for weather or <laughs> or 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 time he's like he's the most durable he's <laughs> a, a most durable and re always re always ready person in town and i'll add that um rich really stepped up as rob's pulled away and made for a successful well run um season of pruning First, Jay gets some kudos there. Thank you, Jay, for all the time you put in. It's expert leader. And then Rich um, did all the coordinating and communications with the tree warden. And oh, oh Rich Parrish. Yeah, don't, Rich, don't give me any. Sorry. Yeah, Rich Parrish coordinated just... with Rich, the tree warden, and no. kept the set a set a nice model for going forward for, for building on the pruning so we can give good structure to all these new trees we've planted and it's been critical and done a great job. Thank you. I think we're going to have to think of some way to name each of you so that we're not constantly saying, no, no, the other rich. <laughs> uh, rich is rich. Uh, uh, Texas rich has done that in, in, in to the extent that his email now is me rich, M E rich, because <laughs> I, I would, always get it wrong and I just see Rich and stuff. So he, he I, I don't know if Rich, if it's okay to say Texas Rich though, or is that? No, oh, that, that's fine. Yeah, so sometimes when we're in a hurry, we, because- oh, That's good to know. We say Texas Rich. Uh, Rich Parrish, if you have a different email, can you send it to me? Because I did send you a link to this meeting. I don't know if you got it or not at your okay. other email address, if that is, I really only have one, but I I didn't see the uh, the link to this meeting, so I dug it up on the agenda. But uh, okay, well, let me let's let's uh, I'll talk to you outside the meeting. We'll try to figure out make sure because I did add you to our group list. Okay, um, and you should be getting everything um, that uh, I we sent to all the commissioners. So my, my apologies. Uh, and, and Bridge, one other question. Did you, um, I know that your appointment came in front of the city council at the last meeting. Have you heard from the, have you heard from anyone from the mayor's office or from the city clerk? No, not any, I've heard nothing based on this latest activity. But the, with a, from a call from the mayor a couple of weeks ago, she suggested the middle of May might be a likely time for this to fall in place. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the phone call itself was the, the definitive that the mayor called you, right? No, she just catching up that that the process was moving forward and make sure I was still on board. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. But if I could ask, when is your um, last day or last meeting? My last meeting? Yeah. I think it should be... Um, May, what, what's the first meeting in May? Well, Rich is Rich Parasoliti is not going to be here that meeting. Remember, we're not having that first meeting. Well, then this would be my last meeting, I think. <laughs> oh. oh. But I still hang around. I'm going to plant uh, Saturday, I think, morning. I, th I think Jay will be in the same place. I'll see Jay and Sue. Village Hill. But um, but if Rich isn't at the May meeting, the first May meeting, I'll be. I will have sold my house and be living out of town by then. So it's probably. It's probably it. Hey Rob, you're gonna make me cry now. Don't do that. <laughs> it's not. It's not that much fun for me either. I, I'm. I had a great day today, walking around a little bit, being here. Mm. Being here. Yeah, seeing uh, you all. Yeah. Um, well, I think we'll just, all right, so we'll have to, 
Rob, I don't, I'm not sure, but I think, I'm not sure if you, I, I don't recall if when people resign, if they have to submit a letter of resignation or just notify the mayor's office. I think a letter to the mayor's office probably or, yeah. or to the clerk or to the clerk. Uh, you could send it to the clerk or you could just, you could email me a, a link or email okay. me something and I can forward it to the mayor just so, okay. you know, you can just make it official in your last uh, yeah. days. Yeah. Or you're just not going to renew your term. You could do it that way as well. And then Jay, that'll give you some time to sort of think about if you are um um, interested in rejoining, which is great because Jay, I believe, uh, is would is our uh, one of the founding original members of the commission, along with Jen and Rob. Wow. So Jen, that in means 2016. like 2016. Yeah. So Jen, that means like you're like the uh, like you have the most seniority <laughs> here. That's <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one other thing before we switch subjects is that I, I do want to thank Jen and um, some uh, folks from Tree Northampton that came out today to help us in the nursery. Um, I'm, I'm a little, we're a little behind, a little operationally challenged at the moment. So instead of planting today, um, the Wednesday crew came down and they actually, um, we undid uh, all of the, um, um, uh, we took all the trees apart. We took got rid of all the mulch. We checked them all out. We sort of organized them all. The ones we had, we held over from last year that were healed in. So that was great help. Thank you. We, uh, that'll make our life easier. Um, and um, we can, uh, we can talk more about the bare root stuff and the other, um, the other, the tree contract and everything else underneath the uh, Arbor Day. So, but I just want to say thank you very much. It was thank fun. You. And Abby, Abby, thanks you very much. Oh. <laughs> that would have been a lot for you guys, both of you to do. Yeah. That's all I got to yes. say. It, was, it would have been a day. Yeah, yes, Jim. Um, I, I'm just saying I got to be leaving soon. I can't stay for the whole meeting, but uh, okay. good to see you all here, and I'll see you Saturday. Okay. Thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah, Jay, okay. thank you. All right. Bye. Yeah, see you bye. Saturday. Thanks. Yep. Bye. See you Saturday. Um, okay, our next any, any other questions for me at all about any of the stuff I talked about? I don't think so. Uh, okay, uh, Education Outreach Subcommittee on Spotted Lanternfly, Molly and Jen. I'll, I'll start out on that. Um, well, I think do we who has to approve the minutes of that subcommittee meeting that Jen and I were at? Do so we that would that would be you and Jen. And so what I'll have to do is you sent those to me today. Thank you. Um, Sue, you sent me the minutes from our meeting we had on the 7th. Thank you. Um, and then I think there's another set of minutes, Jen, that you sent me possibly last month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bundle all those minutes up at our to put them together for our May meeting. And then all the folks that served on those subcommittees can approve those minutes so then we can get them posted. Um, and just quickly. Um, the uh, going forward, when we have subcommittee meetings, and I'm sorry I didn't mention this earlier, that we are going to have to make sure that we find a way to record the meeting. Okay. Whether it's uh, either uh, visually, uh, it has to be, a minimum, it has to be audio. So um, that is something that um, I talked to Donna about, and Donna talked to the mayor's office about. They have to be recorded. So if you remember in the past, when we used to meet in the city um, city hall hearing room, we always, they were recorded and they were magically uploaded to uh, NCTV's uh, website somehow. We, you know, it wasn't up to us. They were just pulled out of there. But um, so we'll just have to keep that in mind when we move forward for subgroup meetings. We'll have to just, so like the Watson room, they don't have a recording um I suppose you could record it on your phone if you wanted to, but it would be probably easier to try to figure figure out places where we had re recording mechanisms. Um, what I did in our last meeting, um, recording devices, I should say, um, what we had in our last meeting is I just I opened a Zoom a Zoom meeting and I recorded the Zoom meeting on the cloud, and I just turned the computer towards the gallery of of uh, attendees and you know, hopefully everything was captured. So that's another way of doing it as well. Mm. So, you you know, if you have a Zoom account, 
and you wanted to record you could do that as well the uh, just the audio and then just submit it to me and then it gets <clears throat> i would send it to bonnie and they would upload it for us so just a, just an fyi mm. other right. do, do you know if other like commissions that have subcommittees like how do they do it you know there are not of uh, the only sub the only subcommittees are the are the really the ones that operate um, under the city council or school committees i think yeah they're... school committee has subcommittees uh like the bike and ped uh, commission the bike and ped i think it's subcommittee or subcommission is of uh um Oh my gosh, what is the other commission that Donna serves on? I have drawn a blank. I'm sorry. Sustainability. Uh, no, no, the other one, the other commission. Oh my gosh, I'll remember in a minute. So they they actually meet in another city building where there's recording equipment. You know, I think I, we could just do it with a computer. Like you said, if we yeah. we just make up a Zoom meeting and put the computer at one end of the table and it can just be filming us talking. Yep. yep. You know, and I mean, the other thing too is that there, you know, we can all, you can also do a hybrid, but hybrid requires more, a little more technology um, because someone actually has to manage the meeting itself. Yeah. While you, so while you're in the meeting, you have to manage the participants and their ability to talk, et cetera. So I think it's for us, I mean, meeting on Zoom has been really good, but I, you know, meeting in person is great too. But it's trying to find a place where you could manage a hybrid meeting in the present um, city facilities is kind of difficult. You have to really do it in city council chambers or the hearing room. Hmm. So, all right. I'm sorry, Molly. Got sidetracked. I apologize. That's okay. That's okay. So um, I'll bring I'll bring those minutes forward and we'll I'll vote on them at the um, in our May meeting. Okay. I think the minutes that Jen submitted to you are the same ones that I just sent just now okay. okay which i sent to everybody because i thought we might be approving them at this meeting but anyway um so jen and i had a meeting march 28th it was just the two of us who showed up and i, I did talk about this at our last meeting but what i'll talk about now is the um follow-up from that meeting um i did send an email to astra perkins who is the um interim state survey coordinator um, for the spotted lanternfly um, program. And uh, I, I asked her her advice about our ideas about, um, you know, the fact that we we have a survey of Atlantis trees, not complete, but but partial at least. And we have a lot of volunteers. And what did she think would be a, a good use of those resources? Um, and I said, um, for example, we've thought about knocking on doors of property owners where Elanthus trees are growing to one, inform them about SLF, two, ask if they would be willing to monitor their Elanthus trees for SLF, three, or whether they would let volunteers monitor their trees periodically, and four, whether we could use their, if they have a male tree, as a trap tree. Um, if that becomes a management option that AMDAR wants to pursue. Um, and, um, and then I also talked about our education, you know, that we're doing some handouts at, um, at the um, Arbor Day thing, which I still have to talk to Sue about. Um, and basically she said, she thought all those ideas were great ideas. Um, I had asked her is, um, she said proactively mapping the Alanthus trees definitely is one of the best things you can do. So I was glad to hear that. It wasn't a waste of time, but yes, SLF will go to other types of trees to feed or lay eggs. Um, as far as what to do with the volunteers, I think all of the ideas you listed are sound and would be helpful to your community as well as to the overall SFL, L SLF effort in the state. So, and, and she's going to talk with the other people on the team and see have, if they have any other ideas. So, um, from that, um, I think our next steps are, um, number one, is to educate um, people who are going to be working at the Arbor Day table. And I, I don't know how we're going to do that on a short time span, but maybe 
Sue, I can talk with you, or maybe I should talk with um, the Tree Northampton coordinator. Do you know who that is? It you who know who all the volunteers are, or is it um, what's her name? You're muted. Vicki started the recruitment, Vicky, yeah. and um, but she's going to be leaving town, so she's been handing it over to me, and I've been filling in some spots. Okay. Um, on it, but happy to talk to you about it, and um, we'll do what we can. It. Um, I'll talk with you about it after the meeting. But we have a lot of handouts that I got from MDAR. Great. Got a lot of uh, like sheets, flyers about it, and little cards that you know. Yeah, let's let's I, chat about how to make it visually interesting so people notice it, and then people will start to ask questions. Okay. Um, volunteers aren't there for long stretch, stretches of time, but I'm there almost all the time, both days. So. Oh, okay, great. If I get up to speed and then you know a lot of the facts about about it. So yeah, I'd want to brush up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, great. all this material that I have will allow you to brush up. It's all it's all in there. So Give anyway. What? Give me a call anytime. Okay. Um, so that's number one education thing. And um the next thing would be um figuring out where the Hot spot. Looking at the map of the Atlantis, figuring out where the hot spots are in town, where there's clusters of these trees, and perhaps knocking on doors of people who live definitely on the lots where those trees are, but also in that neighborhood, to ask them those four questions that I talked about before, um, whether we could monitor or they would want to monitor, and so on. Um, where were they in Northampton? Are they by the post office and the big box store? No, no, they're not. Surprisingly. Oh. Um, we barely found anything on King Street and nothing at the post office. There's a cluster of them in the neighborhood, Ward 3 neighborhood, um, west of Bridge Street. Those little streets in there, um, there's, I forget what those streets are called, but there's a cluster of them in there. There's a cluster um, in Florence on um, North Maple Street, um, kind of going down the hill to Nonatuck and then in that Nonatuck area there's a cluster there and there's a cluster at that cement factory near the bike path um those are the ones that come to mind right now um so yeah so it, talking to the people you know the owners there and asking them those questions um developing a script for for knocking on doors and talking to landowners um recruiting and training volunteers to help do that um and also developing a way to record the information that they collect from the homeowners so we know you know who said yes who said no and and so on um and then our third so we have the education the door-to-door -door. number three is um Deciding what to do about um, if we identify industrial and transport sites, like what do we want to do with that information? Do we want to um, like educate the truck drivers, you know, or or what? I'm not exactly sure what. So we have to think about that and then identify what those sites are where trucks are coming and going and parking for long periods of time and then carry out whatever it is that we decide to do there. And then the fourth one is um, monitoring the Atlantis throughout the season ourselves or the, or the um, volunteers. Um, and then the fifth one is um, brainstorm other educational opportunities besides. I think that's an important one. We need to do more education besides just Arbor Day. Yes, yeah, Sue? Have you connected with any of the um, commercial fruit people? They're the ones yes. most threatened. I did. I, I talked with um, Mineral Hills Winery people mm -hmm. and they they are aware about Spotted Lanternfly and they actually, I think that um, MDAR has reached out to farmers like that with um, information. So they're, they knew about it. I also, I called, um, who's the maple sugar guy out on Sylvester Road? Um, Stanley Zomek, right? No. Zawalik, right? Yeah, I I left a message for him, but I, I didn't hear anything back. Basically, 
telling him about it. Um, and I don't know, I don't think we have any orchards and like apple orchards in town. There's a park okay. that's that's out of town. I mean, just over the line. Um, no, but that's that's what I've done so far. I don't know of any other specific agricultural places to contact. I have a friend with 80 fruit trees, I'll tell him. Yeah, where's that? It's just in my neighborhood. 80, did you say? Wow. Well, that would be a good place for monitoring. If he's got apple trees, I think, wasn't apple one of the hosts? Um, grapes and... Yeah, definitely grapes, unfortunately. Stone fruits. I have grapes, so I'll be looking for them. Okay. Um, yeah, those would be good places to monitor and tell them about spotted lanternfly so they know what to look for. Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot of, it's a lot of information. Um, yeah, I know. That, no, but that's good. I, I actually, I really like the, um, what was it number, number three, and um, trying to identify industrial and shipping sites. Yeah. And then trying to educate people. I mean, I think one of the things we could do is we could, if uh, we could identify those locations, and then provide them with the MDAR materials. Maybe they could put stick them up by the time clock or on a, a bulletin mm. board. So at least the drivers that are coming in and out of there or the people that are unloading the trucks can actually sort of see what the masses look like and where they might, yeah. you know, because they're the ones that are, you know, truck drivers are supposed to do uh, every eight hours before they move the vehicle and go over the road. They have to do a safety check of the whole vehicle. Oh, um, according to the CDL, um, you have to keep a logbook every, for everywhere you go and every time you move and start the truck, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, that would be interesting. Um, and then um, I definitely agree with you. I think more educational opportunities, because I really, I think, you know, we have reached, uh, we have reached a certain point, or we have reached a plateau um, of what we've done, and what we've done well, and we know what we've done poorly. And I think sharing that educational part of that, with, whether it's from planting trees, or whether it's actually developing ordinances or you know anything of that nature i think it's really beneficial to to sort of like in a for a better term like market the educational information mm -hmm. that we've yeah we could focus more on that yeah i mean as a group and i think that sort of kind of like plays into um having like statewide conversations with other partners um other tree committees you know like i did with salem um, to see where, like, where they're at, and you know, we, they are looking at our model, and you know, I, I, I think one of the big benefits that we have is that we, you know, if it was just the seven of us trying to get all this done, it would be like virtually impossible. The big benefit is like the like the secret ingredient to this recipe is the nonprofit Tree Northampton. I right? know I because know. that that's the arm that sort of gets everything done um carries like carries all the luggage to the airport uh you know gets the luggage into the plane etc um you know and i think that educational part of that that's an that's another opportunity for tree northampton to actually help us get the ed educational opportunity message out but we just have to basically i think craft the message oh we could put some of the um the tree northampton has a website right we we should put some of that spotted lanternfly info on the website. Okay, send what you'd like to have up there. Okay, and links or whatever. Yeah, I think, think it'll it be good. And and Sue, so you guys have a social media presence, right? Yeah, we post on um, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, I think there's definitely. I mean, I I think it would be good to have that information out there, and every once in a while, just have just spit it back out so people. So I think we get people get saturated with stuff. You constant reminders about things, and you sort of like it's, you get sick of looking at them. You don't want to deal with it, but every once in a while you get a blast. You're like, oh yeah, um, you know. So, so yeah. The, thank you for um, thank you for all the outreach, and thanks for spending all that time talking to Mdar and the other folks because that's a lot of work as well. I appreciate it.
it wasn't actually that much work. It's just that I kept putting it off and putting it off. Once <laughs> I actually did it, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> I think we all know that feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, are you are you uh, planning on having um, a follow up meeting in the future or? I think we should. Yeah, I think we yeah. should do that to start like brainstorming other educational kind of things, and also figure out this thing about the industrial sites and. Um, really like fine tune the script you know although i think actually i volunteered to do a lot of those things at the last meeting but i've only done the things that i just told you about it's uh, that's that's fine i mean i think the other thing too that to sort of piggyback off the educational aspect is um i think a little bit of, of thought and succession planning as well because um from our um April 7th meeting that we had to talk about moving forward and trying to coordinate planting in, um, you know, in Rob's absence and trying to get everyone else up to speed. I, I, it made me realize that we, we haven't really thought a lot about succession planning and actually having um, a framework in place that sort of explains uh, from, you know, A to Z, how we got to where we are and what, you know, not necessarily, the individuals that had the role, but the positions that had the role in getting where we are. And if one of us were to leave or um, et cetera, how would we, how would we fill that void? I think it's kind of an important conversation because we have this really great model that, that uh, continues to flourish. Um, and it's, we, I think sometimes you got to take a step back and look at it all and just try to figure out if, if, you know, four of us were to need to step down, if I were to decide to retire, you know, or whatever, you know, how, what's going to happen? How is it going to move forward? So that's something else to think about that maybe we should put it on another agenda to just as a separate item, um, just to have a conversation. Yeah. In, in the meantime, I don't know if it's possible, Rob, to do this, but, um, or maybe it's not necessary, but is there anything that you should be writing up for us about, I mean, not how to prune, but I'll, I'll list of all the things that you do, or I don't know, maybe Rich already knows all this stuff. Um, well, there have no. been a few documents created, a yeah. uh, flow chart, um, decision-making trees, and um, other documents that docu that describe. Sorry, yeah, so, Rob. So Sue and, and Rich and Alicia in particular have been and Jen very much. Jen worked on some major stuff, like Jen's working on how trees, how we get the tree stock and select it and the tree species. She needs input, some more input of statistics, but she'll know what to do with them. Um, we've talked it over and she's actually handed. Yeah, so there's a flow to all the in, individuals that are involved. Um, and I think probably the greatest problem is that though we have individuals who are picking up pieces, um, just making sure that it's all coordinated. And that's something I can't really describe how to do because what it required is one brain driving around the city, noticing and then calling the appropriate people and or, or calling for the appropriate action, yeah. whether that be Rich or Alicia or Sue or me, Texas Rich or Jan or whoever. Yeah. It's really just a one, not like you notice, you see, you report. It's the continual loop of follow up of a little right. bit of information, and then it goes to one place, and then it comes back to you, and then it goes to another place. Yeah. So that, that, so that I think you can't we'll, break it down into little pieces. So that we, 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 <clears throat> Maybe people will be really great at communicating and, and 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 so that when Jen goes out and the wrong tree got picked and then someone else is picking the this tree stock, you know, it all all the information flows, but probably or possibly there has to be someone whose only task is sort of just being a coordinator of the whole the whole ball of wax. I, I don't know. I mean. Yeah. Kind of, we we kind of touched on it with the calendar. Remember, I, I can't remember it, who's doing the calendar. 
Oh, are you talking about that list of tasks? That's well, someone someone suggested there be a calendar that says when different things need to be done. Oh. There is a Google calendar. Alicia shared it with me. Um, I it's on my phone, but I need to access it from a computer. I think. Right. So so everyone will have to be aware of the calendar because it it, it gives people a sense of when they should um, be engaged. And so, for instance, it sounds like this summer we might be pruning maple trees because we've kind of learned that, and also yellowwood trees. And so, you know, this is in, partly in consultation with Rich and Jay, but it, it needs to be on the calendar because if Rich Texas is on vacation and doesn't know who to call or doesn't call anybody, then it'll, it'll just go by and we won't prune any yellowwood trees. Or, and, and that's the kind of, that's the part that I was doing that, um, is I was keeping a calendar, mm. it, it, but it's more than a, I was communicating across. We'll we'll call it across silos, mm -hmm. and that's that's the part that we don't quite. And I think Jen's very aware of it because she's operational. She's and uh, she knows that it's not going to operate without <clears throat> cross silo. Yeah, Alicia's <laughs> been doing more and more yeah so um she yeah. always worked very closely with you yeah so alicia team. knows everything that that i know pretty much um but doesn't have the time to be outdoors working or inclination um but she she's got it all you know all through, in her head too for her education and involvement so and arbor train arborist training and yeah, I mean, she's an ar she's an actual arborist. So, so do people people that are going to take over some of your tasks? Do they know who they are and what they're going to be doing? So, Rich from Texas, can you? He's already done it. He's there. Uh, yeah, I I understand Rob's process in the in the pruning, and uh, so I I think I have a pretty good idea what is needed and when. And then in coordination with the tree warden and Jay and our volunteers, yeah, I'm prepared to uh, coordinate, you know, the group to get the pruning done. Yeah, he, he did it the, the previous, this season that just ended. And then um, Jen is very tuned up on um, when, when in the field planting days, exactly what and how and where the tools are and yeah, we're starting. We still have. I mean, I think there's gonna. I we're still figuring things out. Like every time something's revealed, you know, yeah. some. Oh, right. We uh, got to do this too, or oh, we need to. You know, yeah. it's just there's a lot of um, balls in the air, and it, it's the immediate. I mean, the coordination. I think we need to figure that out because I think that's true. We need to have one coordinator. And doesn't mean that they have to do all the things, but we definitely have um, some very strong volunteers who can go out and mark dig safes and who can, uh, you know, help prune or who could go take a list and dig out dead trees and put them on the list and, you know, but there, but there is this micro things like did the dig safes get done you know that we you know you have to go circle back and look you know and what do you do about the stake that is in can't be there you know you got to make a decision about that so we i think we have people that can do those things it's more you know day to day like three you know a month out we have to know where you know what dig safes we're sending for a month from now you know so and then it's a bigger picture of, you know, how, when do we have all these sites that I need to go out and visit for buying stock for the fall, but that needs to get done by a certain time. Like all those things, I have never worked in this particular system before. Like I get it, but I, you know, it's a unique, every kind of planting system is different, you know? what you need to do when but i like i'm used to that flow you know from other jobs i've had or 
growing stuff in greenhouses or, but um, so we're still figuring some things out, but Alicia, I'm in really close contact with Alicia and with Sue and with Rich and we're trying to figure, and we're trying to also figure out how do we do solid lines of communication with Rich. Which Rich? Uh, Tree Warden Rich. Okay. Without having him get all these emails from all these different people, mm. you know? So we're trying to, we're trying, the, there's a bit of a learning curve. I think it's going to be a little messy for, for a short period of time. Yeah, bear, bear with us, Tree Warden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, it, why does it have to be one stream? Because when Rich comes into the work in the morning, he knows that the operational part is me. And so he knows he has to go through there. He might have a hundred emails, but he's, he knows he has to check what I had to say because it might be that morning that I'm asking him if we can plant or not. And right. so he, right. you know, whereas some of the other emails might wait. And so if, if he's getting emails from all over the place, he won't know which one he's got to check that morning. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're, the answer is, you know, we're partially there, I'd say. Mm -hmm. at this point we're doing pretty good i mean yeah and rob um, is still available like i've called rob while i'm standing on a street somewhere <laughs> said, what uh you know so yeah surprising number of little details yes at every mm -hmm. step of the way that we've relied on rob's institutional knowledge and experience because he's he's been with us planting you know each and every site from the get-go. Yeah. And 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 I and I still spend an, an hour a week with Alicia sorting this out. Hmm. Pretty much. Uh, Rob, if I could ask you, since we were lucky enough to have you, but it, it seems like watering the trees is is a job that hasn't really been taken up by Tree Northampton and tends to be right. delegated to DPW. Do you think that's going to change or should that change? Uh you know, DPW has large equipment, mm -hmm. and Rich figured out how many gallons a week it is. It's like twenty thousand. It's it's some uh, two uh, five hundred. It's about twelve thousand. Twelve thousand gallons a week, and so without equipment, like serious equipment, we can kind of go after it. But it's like a teaspoon trying to put a fire out with a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. um, to to move twelve thousand gallons, you need some pretty big trucks, and so I don't think Tree Northampton can do it. You'd need some sort of automated software too, where people could check off this tree's been watered, this tree's been watered, and you'd have patches of trees that weren't, and patches that were, and you, you know, in order to reliably keep on top of it, Rich's Rich Parasoletti's Tree Warden staff is tracking it as they go. They're keeping track of what's been watered, what hasn't been watered. And for volunteers to try to do that, um, you know, it's, a, it's a monumental task. Now, now, an exception though is of course where David comes in here is that by your t doing, organizing at least Jackson Street and maybe other schools during school, when school's in session, I know Rich took over when school's out of session, solves a problem and it's a it's a it's a discrete separate task and that that i hope continues it, it, yeah i think it will continue i'm hoping to in, introduce it to the other schools too exactly and and because uh the, the issue is that rich the, the tree, dpw has trouble watering the trees when school's in session because it means bringing equipment onto the um, campus which the schools rightly don't want then when summer comes the parents go on vacation they're not going to water the trees anyway so that's a good time uh to have um the dpw take over in the past mm -hmm. so there are there are times when it's really important for people to water trees um, i don't know it was kind of scary this year when we already had 90 degrees right i heard yeah you know that's what that's what wrecked our good times in previous years is it got too hot before the dpw was on the road with their trucks the water trucks and are there still is there still a shortage of employees for doing that rich 
No, I have Brooke and Abby. Uh, Abby came back and Brooke is uh, still working with us and they would be the dedicated waterers. Um, okay. So that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is definitely a plus. But again, I we're operationally challenged in other places. Mm. So, um, you know, we're still going to have to sort of do double duty and we're going to have to, the three of us will have to maintain Bridge Street Cemetery and then swing out and do trees as well. So um, it's okay. I mean, it's okay for now, especially given the fact that we're probably going to not plant as many trees this year as we have done in the past, just giving, you know, for that reason and a few others. But yeah, I mean, I think it's good. I think it's great that David actually, and this is one of the questions I, I had under the Arbor Day or the Arbor Day, uh, but it would be helpful to try to like solidify the partnerships with the schools to get the um, trees watered um, on the school grounds during the school week by PTO folks or students or whatever it needs to take because we we have a really small window now that elementary school starts at eight in the morning. Yeah. So we only have an hour. We actually have less than an hour. By the time the staff fires up the truck, fills the water truck up, gets the fuel and the everything, they get to the job site. They're probably there for 20 minutes. And typically at elementary school, and I'm sure David can speak to this better than I can, but the kids are, if they're there at eight, the kids are being dropped off at quarter of eight and they're outside playing until the first bell rings and they have to go inside the building. So for us to get on a school property, it's really difficult. We Is it school, possible to fill the trucks with water and gas the night before? Um, not, I mean, no, it's not, but sometimes we're running on empty at the end of the day. So we uh -huh. try to water as much as we can in one day. Um, and then by the time they get back, it's like five minutes of three and that's, you know, three o'clock's the quitting bell. So yeah. that definitely is possible, but you know, as, as we decide to plant in more difficult places with a little more challenging terrain and and depth to it, like school properties, you know, it's not the public right of way necessarily. It's it just becomes a little more complicated. But I think this, I think as Kent will uh, as Kent will report out at some point in May, I hope about our tree, the, our tree planting that we've done since 2015. Our mortality rate is per, is low low you know it, we, we have uh we've been we've been successful and and due to a lot of things but watering's the key one of the key ingredients you know yeah so, but so yes um it's i'm we sorry it's it's oh. five it's 5 30 i i just want to we got off track a little yeah. bit but i think this is all good um so i don't know if anyone else has any follow-up questions to what we just talked about or we can just sort of segue into the arbor day okay uh sue do you would you like to just kind of brief us on the uh, tree whip giveaway where that's at okay front of city hall 8 a.m to 4 on friday arbor day and um we have Rep Savadosa signed up, which is gives us a little visibility in the community. People will, she's done it for many years before she was a rep. Um, so it was nice to, ha nice to have her back. And um, we have a number of volunteers signed up. We have, we'll be giving out some information sheets and I want to really beat the drum that, you know, if people really need to take care of these trees, that bunnies will eat them if they don't have a cage and that they need water and what a great impact we can make if we could get these trees to live in private yards where they have space for their roots and good root mass they can make a much bigger impact than you know the the poor struggling street tree um and that this can be important you know a, a great thing a press release um rich shared with you folks has all the species um so let's see so friday eight to four saturday eight to noon in front of city hall tell one tell all and um i think i forwarded to everybody uh um there's a thousand whips being given away this weekend by bartlett as well so we've got some competition this year but they have um largely different species than we have and um the more the merrier the more we can more trees we can get in and get people to protect them so 
we usually have an educational message. We've had volcano mulching has been a big message. And this year it's you know, putting cages around trees and protecting them and get these trees to grow. Anything, any questions or? I just want to mention that for the first time, kind of because uh, David like hooked us up to do a walk around at the high school, the um, the high school science class, we're still ironing out which ones are going to do the uh, preparation of the tree whips. So hmm. um, I'm coordinating with the science teacher. We're going to meet on Wednesday of next week to actually get the I'll have the tree whips from Rich and bring compost and we put them in the little bags and we have to package them. So I um, have a big container of those bags. Oh, because, okay. Because Rich just um, gave me a bunch of bags, but I can get them. It, okay. Uh, maybe it's have, on Friday. Because sometimes they had the roots were too long and we use newspaper bags. Oh yeah, I have those too. Yeah. So yeah, we, I, I have a huge thing of the small of the bags they sent. Okay. I'll put them in the tree shed. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah, sometimes the, the, the bag supplier are not useful at all, and you need a whole pile of bigger bags. Yeah, I have. I remembered that, and I have, like, uh, I get the newspaper, so I have two or three bags of newspaper bags. Yeah, right. For, the, like, the oaks that are too long. Yeah. And sometimes we run out of twisty ties, too. Oh, that? I maybe, I don't know. Can you buy twisty ties? I don't know. We're moving at work. There's a drawer full of them all. I, I, I can supply, <laughs> ask if we I can can supply you with the twisty ties if need be. Just let me know what you need. Okay. All right. You can actually use what there's 600 twisty ties in that bag I that bag I gave you today. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. Great. And Jen, what time are you? Is it during the school day? Are you meeting with Dan? It is during the school day. Yeah. Yeah. If you want me to let you know, I'm still kind of in negotiation with the teacher because I think he has more classes than I don't. It's a little hard for me to gauge how long it's going to take to do, you know, but I think they'll be pretty fast yeah. um, because he he has classes of like 25 kids. So, you know, um, we're going to have some tables set up, I believe, as long as it's not raining in a parking lot. And we're going to. So if you if anybody's interested, I could once we finalize, I emailed the teacher, but back. But I think he might be away or some, you know, because it's school vacation. Mm -hmm. So I haven't heard back from him. But um, I and I don't know what his, you know, the culture of his classes, which ones would be kind of better from quality control point of view. So um I can let you know when, what time, um, if people want to, I can even, I can send it to the commission if you want to, if you want to know the times. So. There might be some restrictions on, you know, being on property, school property or. Yeah, property I wonder if I, yeah, yeah, that's true. I should ask him about that. Yeah. Yeah. Might be something where it's restricted. Right. That's a good point. All right, thank you very much. Um, I just want to give you a quick update. I we did take the delivery of the bare root stock yesterday. Um, we uh, I rejected one um, Kentucky coffee tree that was damaged from shipment, and then we are missing a Machia amarensis. So we are, uh, which I, we ended up getting a, some type of critigus in its place. So we, um, I sent the critigus back. I sent the broken um kentucky coffee tree back so it leads leads our goal for this weekend is to um use all the bare root stock that we have and then add a few things uh to complete like lead school completely so it's that's all planted and then um if we need more stock for village hill we can always backfill with the village later on with village hill stock that's also going to be a little tough going up there i think because you're planting in between existing trees and there might be um, some, uh, you know, probably fibrous root systems, but probably some structural roots you might run into as well. But you might be surprised though, because those trees are all probably still in the wire baskets <laughs> and everything. Um, and there is, uh, I, re I was reminded after Jen, we departed today that some of those places has um, 24 inch pieces of plastic that actually um 
were put in between the sidewalk and the tree belt and between the road and the tree belt to prevent tree roots from going mm -hmm. underneath. So you might run into some strange, not, not you because you and I are together, but I think Jay, I'll, I'll call Jay, might run into some strange stuff. But um, that when we oh, good. left it, I thought about that. I'll make a little note. That would be great if you called Jay because he's, uh, I scheduled him to be at Village yeah. Hill. So we'd have somebody who really knows roots yep. on site there. And he's also very strong. And um, yeah, I thought we might need guidance and allocating more of the saws there. I don't think you'll need saws at, at the school, um, et cetera, just to taking consideration that it's going to be tough. And Rich, you got the the tree list from yeah. Alicia? Okay. Yeah, I got and, the tree and, list from Alicia and then I'm going to just match up uh, the uh, list, the, uh, the photo you sent me. The map came through? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if I have any questions, I'll just reach out to you. Okay. Perfect. And my goal is to deliver um, all the tree stock on Friday. And, and if you want me to be there at Leeds on Friday, I'm okay. happy to show up there, you know, just, yep. just we, me. we may run a shortage of buckets. So that's something we're going to have to try to. How many short are you? I, I don't really know yet. We have to go and we, after I, uh, Abby pulled the rest of the buckets we have today and brought them over to the cemetery and I don't have a final count yet, but, okay. um, we might have to cut some corners to get I, my my biggest concern is making sure they get plenty of water. So I'd prefer to have at least two a minimum of two buckets of water per tree. And then if we have to forego the mulch, um, maybe we have to come back and mulch them on Monday or Tuesday. I, I don't know yet, but. Or we could send, you know, it's possible that, you know, we could, if you need volunteers to go back and mulch, like, you know, Christina probably could do that or, you know, sure. we, we can, we should be in contact with, about that. I mean, if you can sure. do it, fine. I'm not saying don't yep. do it, but um, that's also a possibility. We have some people that would do it. Yeah. We, I might, I might... To wrestle up 10 buckets for you. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Um, I, Rob, uh, oh, I was just going to ask Rob, he has all those buckets. Are you going to keep them? <laughs> I don't think I have any buckets anymore. Yeah, oh, I thought you had all those painted ones. He's got all kinds of stuff. Uh, no, 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 no. They're um, in the shed. Jen came over. All right, we've already got them. She took a gigantic haul of stuff. Okay. okay. And and it was so big actually that it didn't fit where it was supposed to go, and we had to kick somebody else out of the shed. It was. <laughs> it, right. it, 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 she took more than would fit in a pickup truck. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't right then? It, was two, it, was, it was two trucks, right? Hmm. Yeah, two truck loads. There's a there's a couple of buckets we could probably spare there. And then um, but we need them for the tools, Molly. We use those colored buckets are designated, you know, for tools. We need, you know, nine kits at bleeds and we need nine kits or um, at least six or seven kits at the other site at Village Hill. So, but uh, somebody bought some nice blue ones. Maybe we could figure out a way to lend a few to DPW. We'd have to mark them. Yeah, let me get a final count and I'll be in touch. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about um, is that I am, I got a, our, um, put our order together for Amherst Nursery, which is all grow bag trees. Uh, we ended up with 113 trees and the about eighteen thousand dollars in cost for those trees for this spring. So we are we're going to be doing something a little different this year. We're going to be using the combines contract. So John uh, Kinchla, uh, DBA Amherst Nurseries, is on the combine state contract list. So I don't have to use I don't have to use the quote three quote system. We can directly contract with anyone on combines. Wow. it's a state it's a state run contract system and we're a municipality so um i'm hoping um to go over there on tuesday to do a bunch of tagging and see if john is willing to do a delivery um but again i think that's going to require some coordination and forethought on my part with jen 
and Alicia about what you may all want to plant while I'm um, away. So that way there we get the right stock. Um, so you can have at least do some planting the first week of uh, first and second week of May. So I will be in Jen, I'll be in touch with you outside the meeting because I might want you to go, maybe go to a, a trip to the nursery. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. All Tuesdays right. are a good day for me. So, okay. So that, so that, I mean, and, and really, I mean, that's really about it. I mean, I think for this weekend, we'll be, we'll be pretty, we'll be set. I, I will tell you that the bare root stock is big and it has a lot of structural and fibrous roots. So it's really nice looking stuff. Oh, good news. That means a lot of digging though. That's a lot of digging. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yep. yep. They're the biggest bare root trees I've ever seen. Uh oh. <laughs> they're big. They're yeah, big. they're they're big. You ought to see the 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 platinus, Rob. They're huge. The the platinus, the platinus root balls are are enormous, actually. Well, um uh whoever Sue, can you order up more workers? I'll try. I've been, I, the Rotary didn't want to split up their, they decided that they wanted their people to be at the school. Oh, okay. And I've been trying to work on them to like, well, come on, we're going to need some other people to go to the other site. So there's, you know, there's 27 Rotary volunteers at the wow. school plus our leaders. And then we're up to about 17 with, 10 good diggers at the at the other site and we're still looking for rugged yeah. people especially it'll, it'll it'll be fine it just they, they you know it'll they might not all get planted in the in one day you could always stay over oh you muted yourself what what well, you can always stay over at my house rob <laughs> <laughs> i've got a guester thank you uh -huh. yeah i could just yeah, I could stay here. Thank you. That would be nice. You could be the cameo planter, do like a cameo appearance. Yeah, or the the couch surfing planter. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe I'll do another a broader net and try to find some people. Um, it, it's tough because you don't want if you open it up too wide, you end up getting people who can't really dig but want to be involved well actually i think you have plenty of people it's just the distribution of them yeah plenty of volunteers just an awful lot of them are not you know in one place it leads right so the thing is is that you have a lot of people that don't do a lot of tree planting and digging in one place and then you have a lot of people that have a lot of digging experience in another place so I think Jen and I are going to have we're going Jen and I are going to be busy. What well, one way one way it could work is that you could um, you'll probably finish up at Leeds pretty quickly, is my guess. I mean, with is the soil there should be relatively easy digging because there's no roots probably. There's so few trees, and so if you finish up there, you could at least if volunteers are standing around and frustrated because they have nothing to do, send them over to. The village hill maybe okay yeah um, um could i uh could i ask, david i just have to ask a quick question so sue sue talked sue and i talked last week about potentially helping the schools try to figure out how to have the students water the trees that are at the school and potentially having some kind of like wagon or cart where they could actually move water around i wasn't that's sure that's if, right yeah i wasn't sure um what kind of what what you would need from from DPW to help facilitate that, or um, because it would be helpful, especially at Leeds. This some of the plantings are over by the um, the playground area, and we can't get back there at all during the day. We can do the ones along the road very easily, um, but we can't get to any of the stuff on the inside of the school. Yeah, well, the, so the challenge at Jackson Street. Rob gave me five gallon Poland Spring. Yep. Uh, but, you know, water's heavy and it's uh, I didn't really have a garden cart, so I ended up using an old bike. But you really, I think, want something that's fairly easy to wheel around. And if you're working with a team, you want really two of them so that you don't bottleneck around. Um, so I don't know, two garden carts, I think, would be ideal. 
Sort of like a nursery wagon? Yeah, um, sort of like a nursery wagon. Yeah, okay. All right, so you want two at each, two for each school? Yeah, but then um, you would need a bike lock or something to secure them because they're they're valuable and the kids would otherwise just take them and 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 was the thought to have um some partner with some teacher at the school to get this done during the day or the principal or or what was your thoughts on that no i, I think most likely it would be a parent volunteer okay or se several parent volunteers um I mean, also, we, we could try one cart and see how that goes. It's just, okay. It, it kind of limits the number of people who can show up and help with watering. I mean, the other thing you could do is try to do some type of like um, plastic gallon jug drive, you know, like milk comes in because then the kids could even, you know, most kids can pick up a gallon jug of water, you know? So you would have to, you know, it just, it may be easier to water that way. I don't know. Maybe it's too much. I don't, I don't know, but you could have like a rope that ran through all of them that you tied in to the, so they wouldn't go blowing all around or whatever when you weren't there. Um, just an idea. I don't know if it would work, but. Um, it's a good idea. Why don't I start off by getting one or two of those garden carts? And then David, I'll just, I'll reach out to you and we'll sort of try to figure out how to connect. All right, that sounds okay. good. All right. But also, also do get like a bike lock for- Okay. So that they can be secured to the to a garden shed or something. Okay, all right. And, and David, those jugs went uh, to, the, to, the, to the locker where everything else is. The water jugs? Our Poland uh, spring jugs. Yeah. yeah, well, they're at, yeah, well, they're actually in my backyard. So I, well, they're in your backyard, okay. I mean, Maybe. because I still, I still use them to this day, and well, and, and well, then, you had them, if you had them continuously, or or you, well, yeah, because I've been the only one really. Doing okay, it. well, there's a whole, there's an, there's an additional three or four that Jen put in the locker. Oh, what which locker? So Jen took all the stuff I have, which included yeah. more Poland Springs bottles, right, Jen? Yeah, we have a shed now. Uh, Tree Northampton is borrowing shed um, real estate at Safety Village. So there's a couple people that have keys that if you needed them, we could just coordinate and I can talk to you offline or email you about who has the keys and, you know, we can just open it and um, get them if you need it, whatever you need. I have an inventory I made keep track of what we have wow tracking I, system real-time inventory tracking i bought more tools for arbor day and, and for earth day and rob i have a question for Paris you Saletti, i room. sent you the earth day so you can see who you have there as leaders it's not as dire as it sounded a moment ago <laughs> oh i i agree i agree i'm not, I'm not worried agree. about it it's you fine see that you've got some really strong people strong leadership yeah. It's you. okay. I've been doing my push-ups. We're good. <laughs> uh, Sorry, David. You started. To say well, I, I was just going to ask: Do that should bare root trees be soaked for several hours before planting? Uh, these particular ones are covered with hydrogel. I think they, they've been pretty good about it. They are. They're very good. They're all in plastic bags. Um, they just got bare rooted, I believe, over the weekend. So, and we are putting them in pretty quickly. Um, they are down uh, in the nursery in the shade on a trailer. So, I'm not, David. We would have to have, um, we'd have to borrow your bathtub. I'm serious. These <laughs> these things are like bigger than you can see on your little square of the screen. They're huge. So, I, if you want to let us borrow your bathtub, we can bring them over. But yeah, I'm... so are they that... deep? This is a little into yes. the weeds, but um, Big. I think Jen will appreciate finding out the answer to this question early. So say it's, uh, <laughs> there's some structure roots out going two feet out each side. And so that's a four foot spread. And then there's a couple more feet. So we're, we're up to, you know, eight feet. Um, I would think it'd be legitimate to, go out to the ends and cut some off if it's too big a 
circumference to dig. If there's plenty of fibrous roots closer in. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Um, I think to, for an example, Rob, some of the uh, platinum stock is as big as the platinum stock that we dug up on King Street. Yeah. So it's so pretty, if, pretty if, big. And we dug it up successfully and they all transplanted. So I guess I'm saying that, you know, maybe we don't go beyond like a, certainly not beyond five feet in, in diameter for a hole yeah i mean i i, I again i think it depends upon the tree itself yeah. you know so yeah, what's looking happening? at the tree if it looks like oh you know it's just got some spindly roots out towards the end you just remove them and then you don't have to dig in that far yeah because from the sound of it we're, we're talking about over six feet some of them maybe yeah, they're, they're they're pretty big yeah but i mean it's it's, it's all good. The more roots, the, the merrier. Yep. Um, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Um, just one question. The um, Friday Arbor Day um, planting, the scope of that, because that has not been recruited yet for diggers. Oh. Um, I... I think I th I don't want to speak for Jen, but I think we are we have a dig safe done, but I don't necessarily know if we have the right stock for the dig safe. Uh, we sh we should we should if they came through. I want me to look right now? I I have. Well, if if it if it's if it's stock that is in the nursery, I fine. think. Sorry, right. go ahead. All right. If it's if it's stock that's in the nursery that's viable. Yeah, that's great. If it's uh, it, stock, it was, go ahead, when Rob. we made the list, it was intended that that be so, but we didn't go back and check. In other words, okay, that was made based on last fall. In the so it would be helpful to get that list from Alicia, so we can I we can go now that we uncovered everything, Jen. We can go down to the nursery and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. We can go back and examine things a little more closely. Mm -hmm. So did you notice anything in particular that was um didn't survive didn't make uh, it? Yeah, bald cypresses were struggling. Um the Perkins pink, everything else seemed to be okay. Um the tulip trees that are there, we have five B and B tulip trees and two in grow bags, Emerald City tulips. So I mean, I, I, I think most of the stock survived. I think it's just those and a couple of oaks but those oaks were sort of left over they just I, you know we have a couple of scarlet oaks that are healthy so yes if you could just send me the list i'll go back down in the nursery and look at it all or or we can just talk tomorrow it's fine that might be easier than doing it right now because we got like two minutes left mm -hmm. and we will just just to put the just so i know this in my head we we will not, when you're away, we will not have the ability to move any ball and burlap trees. It would have to be grow bags. Yeah, it would have to be grow bags. And I think, you know, you, depending upon what's going on, you know, I can tell you that Abby and Brooke might be able to help you move things. But if one of them happens to be out sick or they need yeah. to leave work or something, then I don't want, <clears throat> I don't want you to be left hanging with a bunch of volunteers and I can't support what what you're what you're all trying to do you know okay. i just don't want to be i don't want to put tree northampton and the volunteers in a position to fail yeah because we operationally we're just chat we're just challenged that's all i mean we're operationally i can't can't make it happen from afar right right so i think that's a discussion we probably ought to have yeah uh, in person next week yep okay yep. Uh, uh, just a couple, uh, you and I, or and Alicia, or something. Yep. Um, Do yeah. are all the shifts filled for the whip giveaway? I can look. I think we have a few openings here and there. You know, it's never that critical because I'm there all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, let's, let's see. Yeah, 
um, noon to two on Friday. Need somebody? And okay. eight to 10 on Saturday. Huh. All right, I'm not committing, but I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. And I sent something out for diggers to, um, to Larry at, and the master gardeners. I don't know if she sent that out, but I could ask her to do that for the whip giveaway too. Anybody else have any questions or comments or anything they want to add? No. Wow, radio silence. <laughs> All right. Does someone want to Is make? Uh, oh, can I just say officially? I know I've waxed on about Rob because the more I've learned about this tree program, the more I've seen like this dedication. This person, Northampton, is so extraordinarily lucky to have had you. And um, just every step of the way, you've been so quietly involved in so many things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And it's been wonderful working with all of you, those that were here from the beginning and those that have more recently joined in. Uh, it makes me feel very good to know that so many people are chipping in to keep the thing going. I did have a little bit of a fear that there'd be like a, that the trees would not get pruned and that planting wouldn't happen, but I'm seeing good, really good things happen. And thanks especially to, to the, the riches who, you know, in the, the tree warden rich and Texas rich who have really taken, taken a lot. Jen, Sue, David, Molly, everybody. Thank you. Th thank you, Rob. Rob, I have a question for you. Is any of that stuff in the, in your house for sale? Did you have an attack sale in the back there? Actually. So there's stuff I've in my house around with you. No, but there's stuff in my house. That's not going with me. Ah, well, okay. Well, we'll have to have a conversation later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have beautiful taste, so. No, I, I just want to say that I'm not going to say goodbye to Rob. I'm just going to say see you later. Yep. It, I, see it, you later. It hasn't, it hasn't uh, hit me yet that, um, you know, uh, that uh, you will be moving and we will be uh, missing you, uh, mi you know, missing your great help and, I think uh, inspiration, I think the best word for me comes inspiration. I think you've been very inspirational. Um, you, you've, uh, I have to say, I think you've made me think outside the box in a lot of different ways um, during your time on the commission and also just working um, in your various capacities in Tree Northampton and just being a good friend. So I just want to say thank you and I will see you later. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and right. uh, I, I will send you, I will continue to send you emails until you're officially uh, off yeah. the commission. So you, you may want to join another meeting if you have nothing else to do, but I'm sure you'll find something to do. But. Yeah. All right. Well, think uh, of you many years to come. I, as an artist, Rob was a sculptor and he has this extraordinary ability pruning, but also with just where to cite the tree, what the other, how big the other trees will be over time and how the tree will fit into that landscape to make it a beautiful place. It's the aesthetic part of it that's so extraordinary. So not just yeah. the hard work. Thank you. I, I hope that we're all around 10 or 15 years from now, we can take a tour and see how it looks. That's right. Yeah. It'll look like something then. Right now, it just looks like a lot of sticks sticking out of the ground, especially before the leaves come out. But, but in 10 or 15 years, it should look like a garden. I hope. Mm -hmm. And I hope I'm here to do that. An urban forest. Yeah. That's right. It should yeah. be. Yes. Should be. All right. Any last words before we depart this wonderful meeting? Uh, all right. Um, I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can someone make a motion? I move to adjourn this meeting. All right. I have a Just second, again. please. Oh. I need a second. I will. All right, Molly seconds. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, just raise your hands, please. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Uh, Thanks. Have Thank a good you. evening. Thank you very much.